Thank you everyone for showing up. People are still coming in, which is great to see. Um, super exciting uh, webinar today, as all as always. Um, as you know already, at the end we'll have a Q and A. So stay, uh, hold tight, stay. Always interesting questions that everyone can learn from. Super, super exciting stuff. And today, what's really cool is I'm going to be showing a live demo of a dashboard that I built, uh, which I called it a performance marketer's dream dashboard. Uh, and that's what we want to look at. Whatever your performance may be, if it's app stores, if it's e-com, if you're an agency, if you leave, it doesn't matter. We, we're trying to get results and that small KPI can always be changed. Um, but that's the main thing. Um, so again, super exciting stuff happening. Uh, if anyone doesn't know me yet, my name is Danny. I'm the VP of Customer Success and Professional Services here at Magix. Uh, and today we're going to be talking all about building your dream dashboard, uh, why it's important, what metrics do we need to look at, and really how to get started. So let's jump um, straight into it uh, and take it from there. Um, so something that's important for me to mention straight from the beginning is this takes the whole conversation away from this specific campaign, this ad set, this creative, whatever it may be, and we're looking at a more holistic view. We're looking at my business, how profitable I am over time, right? how much can I actually spend on acquiring a customer? And that's what we really want to make sure we understand over time. And that's what we're going to be focusing on today. And that's what you should be obsessing over as business owners or agencies or whatever it may be to communicate this to your clients. So let's just real quickly understand what is a BI dashboard, right? Business intelligence and why do we need it? So a BI dashboard is a visual tool that actually helps us represent data, helps us understand what's going on. Uh, it provides us an overview of the KPIs of the business and measures that we need to understand. Uh, main thing that's super important about here is it allows us to take data from all different places and you put it in one place with a very user-friendly um, indicator. We can customize the dashboard uh, and focus on specific metrics, which that actually takes us to the next level. Uh, interactive charts and graphs to make a whole lot easier. And the main thing that needs to be, it helps businesses monitor performance and track progress towards goals. Any business needs to know a goal. We need to know what we're going into, right? We just started Q3. We should already start planning the goals for Q4 because Q3 goals should already be in the pipeline. Right? And then we can plan for those and strategize and see how are we progressing towards these goals and how far away for, we are from achieving them over time. So as this is digit, right? This is what we used to do uh, as performance marketers, as media buyers. We used to work with this. We used to have five, six tabs open. We used to try and copy paste data from a lot of different places and try and get a lot of metrics. It doesn't work anymore. There's lots of mistakes that happen. You have to be very analytical to understand all these kind of stuff. Then you also had the other option, right? The other option was to go ahead and spend thousands of dollars on all these different tools to help you get all these uh, BI dashboards and analytics behind you and all the different insights. And that's something that we're also trying to push aside and we're trying to make something much more user-friendly for the everyday user. So let's talk about some advantages of building a dream dashboard. As we said, we want to provide a comprehensive overview of our main KPIs, helps us stay on track, helps us make complex data easy which is super, super important because we don't want to go back to the spreadsheets. We don't want to go back to the pivot tables. We don't want to start doing all these X lookups. We want to make it simple and helps us make smart and data-driven choices. Where should we be spending our money? Where we're profitable? Where we're missing opportunities in a way that's very easy to visualize. And that's a super important component we want to talk about. So advantages of building a dream dashboard allows us to access multi-channel data in one place enable uniform communication. And this is super important in companies that have more than a one-man show, OT and agency. It creates one truth. This is the language you're going to be speaking. This is the language you're going to be communicating, right? We're going to be talking about the profitability of the business or whatever it may be, but this is the language. Me and you will now be able to talk the same way because I don't need to send someone to a spreadsheet he doesn't understand. I can share a dashboard with him and we can look at the same data and come to the same conclusions. So it's a very, very, very important point where I see in a lot of places, specifically agencies and brand owners, where they argue about the figures. And this just shows us the exact numbers we can uh, communicate over. Enable setting uh, and tracking company-wide goals, which that's what we want to say we want to talk about the business. That's what we want to focus on. Uh, and help companies understand customer acquisition costs and lifetime value, which is probably some of the most important metrics that people don't even talk about enough. These are the metrics we need to look at. 
how profitable am I over time? What's my customer acquisition cost over time? And that's the most important stuff that we'll be looking into today. So I want to talk some of the essential KPIs for performance marketers. And I think this is important to mention because it takes us away from the traditional return on ad spend cost per lead that we've been used to doing for years. And that's where it comes in all these different things. So let's look at it. So for example, something we actually want to look at as a business owner is my net profit. How much am I profiting after I reduce my cost of goods and after I take out the marketing? How much is my profit? That's what I care about as a business owner. How much do I take into my pocket at the end of the month? I don't care about which campaign performed this or which ad did this. I want to talk about how much money I'm actually getting. Ad spend. So I don't care where am I doing small, where am I doing less. I want to know overall my marketing costs, where am I spending everything, right? My new customer return on ad spend, NC's new customer, right? How does my performance when you look only at the new customers, at my top of my funnel, at my acquisition, right? And that allows me to understand how the rest of my funnel is getting fed. Blended return on ad spend. Uh, another way to look at this is marketing efficiency ratio, MER. It's kind of like the same thing, depending uh, from what line of business you're coming from, right? But at the end of the day, this is what it is, right? It's take us our overall revenue. I don't care where the revenue came from. Take my overall ad spend. I don't care where I spent it. And tell me what's my overall return on ad spend. And that will allow me to know how scalable my business is. And like we said, marketing MER, marketing efficiency ratio, basically the same thing, just works on percentages and on some numbers, but it's very similar. LTV, one of the most important metrics that is nearly not spoken enough in, enough in e-com, lifetime value of a customer, right? How much on average does each customer produ uh, produce? So even if my first acquisition, I'm losing money, I might be generating a lot more profit over time. And that's why it's super important to look at the long picture, not just on the initial uh, transaction. Goal tracking, right? How much revenue am I trying to produce this quarter? How much ad spend am I planning to spend this quarter? And so on and so on. CAC, customer acquisition cost. One of the, another, probably the same level as LTV that people don't talk about enough. How much does it cost me to acquire a new customer? Not how much am I spending on Google and Facebook and Twitter. I don't care. How much am I spending and how much new customers have I generated? How much does it cost me to acquire a new customer? And that's a super important metric. And sales revenue, obviously, that's the most important metric as well um, as an e-com business. But it can also be leads or any other metric depending on what we try to optimize for. So let's look at this now. Um, and let's look at kind of like a nice formula to understand all these different metrics. So lifetime uh, revenue, total revenue in a specific time frame divided by the number of customers. Okay. And that's really there to help us understand um, what on average each customer generates for us over time. Super important metric. Customer acquisition cost. Blended ad spend, I don't care where it came from, divided by the number of new customers. A lot of people think this is all customers and that's a mistake. When we talk a customer acquisition, we can only acquire a customer once. And that's why we're actually asking how many times, how much does it cost us to acquire this new customer? And that's super important. Marketing efficiency ratio, blended ROS, whatever you want to call it. Total revenue divided by total ad spend. In general, how much revenue did my Shopify store say I did? How much ad spend did I spend across all marketing channels? How efficient am I? And basically any blended metrics we want to look at, some of the metrics uh, for each channel divided by the number of channels, super important to look at this. when we look at blended, we want to look at the holistic view of that comes. Now let's look at an example and let's look at how we can calculate profitability. So let's say we have a client that has an average LTV. So we take the total revenue divided by customers. So $100 revenue divided by 20 customers. This is a $5 average LTV. Now, let's say the AOV, total revenue divided by the number of orders, is 100 divided by 50, meaning 2. Okay? Now, let's look at the customer acquisition cost. And stay with me for just a second because this is an important look. The customer acquisition cost, blended spend divided by new customers, right? so let's say $25 divided by 10 is 2.5. So if 2.5 and the average order value is 2, this means that on average, we're losing money, right, on any new customer that comes in. On average, doesn't mean it will always happen, but on average, we're losing half a dollar on every new customer that's coming in. 
But that's not the correct way to look at it when we want to look at a business point of view over time. So to acquire the customer the first time, it cost us uh, more than he actually generated us, right? But when we look at the profitability, so the LTV divided by the customer acquisition cost, right? So the LTV five divided by 2.5, it's actually two, right? And meaning we double in the customer acquisition cost over time. And when we want to look at cash flow over the next couple of months, that's how the way we want to see. So we want to look at the LTV of 90 days. So we know the 90 day average and then the customer acquisition cost, for example. And then we can, and we'll know what we expect in to come over time. We know what we expect in the revenue to be generated over the next couple of months. So if we look at only Facebook, only TikTok, only Google, we're probably going to say, Oh, wait, I'm losing money. I'm going to turn off my marketing. Right. And that will probably lead to you bleeding more money over time because you're not generating any new customers. But when you look at the holistic view, the lifetime value divided to the customer acquisition cost, we can see we actually are profitable over time, even though we lose on the initial transaction. And that's why it's super important to look at the overview. And that's what many, 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 many e-com brand owners and agencies fail to do. So let's talk about some best practices. And I know that last part might have been a, lot, a little confusing. So if there's any questions about that, be sure to put it in the chat or to wait for the Q&A at the end. And we will go back to it and make sure we answer the questions. So we want to define clear objectives, identify key questions, and what should it be answered. Now, who is this dashboard for? Is this dashboard for the media buyer? Or is this dashboard for the brand owner? Is the dashboard for me as an agency owner where I want to see all the different uh, metrics? It's really important to understand that. Make sure we choose the relevant KPIs, right? If I'm a business owner, I don't care about return on ad for Facebook. I care about CAC to LTV, LTV to CAC, right? That's what I want to understand over time. I'm not saying we shouldn't also look at that, but we should also really focus on the stuff that's for business owners. If I'm a media buyer, maybe I want to break down the ads and campaigns and a bit more of a deeper dive into this kind of stuff. And that comes also into the prioritize, right? To really make sure we make it simple and clear. If a dashboard is complex, we lose the point of the dashboard, let's go back to the spreadsheets. It needs to be very intuitive to everyone that looks at it for the first time to understand what's happening. So that comes back to using the effective data, personalizing, and supervised data integrity. Super important to make sure we understand the source of where it's coming from and make sure it makes sense. Right? Every once in a while to kind of do a sanity check, make sure if my Facebook says something in 50 rows, Maybe something's not good there. Let's make sure I understand the pixel setup correctly and so on and so on. So just to keep a scanning to check every once in a while is important as well. So let's go really step by step how to start creating a dashboard and all that. And from there, we'll move to a dashboard that I've already created to really have a nice overview of a dashboard that we can look into. So to create a new dashboard, very simply in your Magix account, go to the one click report section and create a new report. Super simple. Nothing to be too uh, complex over here. The next step that's really important to do is to connect the data sources. Go ahead, click on the data sources. Make sure you connect the correct and relevant data sources to you. If it's Google Ads, TikTok, Google Analytics, uh, Facebook, Shopify, connect all the relevant sources for you so you're ready to go. Uh, and you can just add more. We authenticate if needed. Add accounts. Very flexible to whatever you may need to do. Create a dashboard. So you go back to the screen. Uh, and you can either create a dashboard from scratch or you can use a template. We're always adding more and more templates to make sure it's very um, user uh, friendly. So you can go in a one click report and with one click have a ready made report for you, which you can always customize and make uh, flexible for you as well. Then you would select the ad account. So you can select multiple accounts for one report. So you can use, for example, if you're a brand owner that, that works in 10 different regions and you have a different Facebook account for each region. You can put all 10 Facebook accounts in one report and look at the holistic view of all the accounts. So that's a super big advantage that you can use here as well. Um, and then you can basically use a bunch of different widgets and we'll see live examples of this in a second, but you can use the informer. You can use the uh, nice little graphs here where you can see ad spend and ROS and you can use blended metrics here or specific metrics. It's all flexible to however you want to do it. A um, lot of different things we can do. Widget selections, again, you can use, for example, these kind of overviews. We'll go through them in a second. Uh, nice little pie charts. You can set goals, right? So what's my, I want a goal for my net profit for the next 31 days to be X. And then we can see how we're progressing over time. Really important thing as well. 
And that's a nice little overview. Now we've talked a lot in theory. Let's now see in practice how it all comes together and let's see how all the different elements come and work um, and take it from there. So now we have a real dashboard that we built. All the data here is real. Everything is real on a specific account. And I know it looks a little bit overwhelming, lots of numbers in the beginning. That's because I wanted to put a lot of value into here. But in a second, when we break it down, we'll see it's actually much more simple than we, than we take, right? So the way I like to work with it is I like to give subcategories of, uh, of, um, uh, templates, right? So I can kind of see what's happening. So first of all, this is my dream dashboard for performance marketers. And these are my blended metrics. Shopify, Facebook, Google Ads, and TikTok. So what we can see over here is exactly what we talked about, my blended ROS. I don't care where I spent the money, right? What's my overall return on ad spend? When we look at my Shopify revenue compared to that, right? Where am I spending that? Where is it affected? And the way I like to do it is I like to see it over time to understand my momentum. Last 30 days, last 14 days, last seven days, and yesterday. To really see what's going on. And this is the dashboard I would want to come in first thing in the morning, and this is what I'm looking at. Right, I'm coming in the morning, first thing to see, and I can understand what's happening with my accounts, momentum. This is brilliant for me if I'm an agency owner. This is brilliant for me if I'm a brand owner. Really easy to communicate between the different uh, channels. Blended customer acquisition cost. How much does it cost me to acquire a new customer in the last 30 days on average? Right, so across all the channels that I spend money and all the new customers on Shopify, how much did it cost me to acquire a new customer? Right. Obviously, we want this number to be as down as possible, and that's how we kind of work, and we can see this over time. And this is a super, super, super important metric to keep in mind that lots of people don't use. If you ever forget how to calculate, you also have this input here that can help you calculate that as well. Blend, blended ad spend, how much money am I spending across my channels? Last 30 days, 14 days, 7 days, and so on. And again, we talked about this, LTV to CAC. Super, super important, right? It, it paints a completely different picture. So if we look at the last 90 days, right, the average LTV is four times my average cost per acquisition, meaning even if my AOV is low, assuming my AOV is low and I'm even losing money on my first transaction, over the course of 90 days, I'm going to make four times that cost per acquisition in sales because people are going to come back and purchase, people are going to come back from my email marketing, from my upsell campaigns, from whatever it may be organically, because they know my brand now, right? And that's what we want to now maximize and monetize, and that's what we need to track. So we can see last 90 days, 60 days, 30 days, and 14 days. We can really play around with this and look at these numbers. But these are super, super important KPIs for us as brand owners to go ahead and look into. Next, let's say I also want to see some specific breakdown of specific areas within the business. So I can go ahead and I can look at Facebook return on ad spend and I can see how that's been performing over time. Uh, I can look at ad spend and see how my ad spend is performing over time. Right? With the dream scenario being ad spend going up and Facebook growth going up. Right? That's like the best for both worlds. That's what we want to see. Uh, obviously, it's not sustainable forever, but that's the dream scenario of what we're trying to tackle. And then we can identify these opportunities and really maximize on them. So Google ads as well. Right? We want to see these kind of metrics as well, going up, going down. And what's really nice here is it's very easy to visualize, very easy to and intuitive to understand what's coming from. So that's about that. Uh, this is a template we'll be sharing pretty soon as well. So I added TikTok here as well, even though this specific account doesn't really work on TikTok too much, as you can see. But it's just important to be here as well. So we can see it is a strong marketing channel with more and more people are using. So we do want to give you guys the option as well to see the data from your TikTok ad account specifically and separately, and to really identify the scaling opportunities and seeing where you can move more into. Next, I like to kind of create a segment, graphs and general insights and all these kind of stuff where you can really see all the different areas of the stuff, of the brand. So for example, last 30 days spend, I can very easily visualize where my majority of my spend is going to, right? So I can see 58% is going to Facebook, uh, if I'm looking at clicks, I can see that Facebook is generating much more clicks than any other channel compared to the relative spend, right? So that's something that's interesting to see, uh, and we can work based on that. We can also change these clicks to revenue, whatever we want, but the idea is that it's all flexible to whatever we want to be, and we can really play around with these kind of metrics. Next, I can see, for example, Facebook return on ad spend. I can do a nice visual gra uh, graph of the age group, 
And I can see that actually the youngest, youngsters have a better uh, return on asset over here. But what's interesting to see is I'm barely spending any money here. So for me, this is a scalable opportunity. Let's try and scale up the younger age groups and see how that's performing, 18 to 24, because I have a good ROS here, but I'm barely spending any money there. Right? Let's try and monetize that as much as possible. Um, so I think that's something that's really interesting that we can really look into uh, and, and look at these as scalable opportunities. We can also break this down by gender and a bunch of different uh, segments to really give us a lot of different insights. Same thing for Google, right? Identify this. By the way, same thing again, barely any spend going on here, right? Very high return on ad spend. Scalable opportunity, 65 plus as well. Look at this. Very low spend, very high return on ad spend. Now, obviously, as we spend more, the return on ad spend will come down, but it's still very interesting insights to look at these opportunities to identify where we can scale and really monetize that as much as possible in a way that's easy to visualize and talk between uh, people, right? We don't need to look at a graph. We don't need to look at any uh, VLOOKUPs. We don't need to look at any uh, segments on Excel. We can simply look at this and see the, the logic behind it. Next, we can also visualize a bunch of our stuff here. So for example, sales, ad spend, and net profit, right? So we can come over here and we can see all the sales, ad spend, net profit, uh, and really what it, where we want to be. So we can see, for example, in purple is the net profit, uh, and we can really make sure we're achieving these net profit goals on a daily basis. So we can see this is relatively a short term, 14 days, but we can obviously play around with it. We can create these nice graphs over here change these breakdowns to whatever it is. So I wanted to do, for example, day of the week. Uh, and then we can look at like return on ad spend or whatever it may be. Uh, we can see here, for example, that Sunday and Saturday actually have the weakest return on ad spend, which is interesting, the weekend, right? So maybe this is an indicator that we should be spending more Monday to uh, Friday and not Saturday, Sunday for this specific brand. Another brand could be telling us a completely different story. And that's why it's important to really make sure we use these dashboards for different kinds of brands and really Make sure we understand that. Um, custom acquisition cost as well. Really see, for example, where that is most effective and least effective. So Saturday, for example, we can see it's least effective, Monday, Sunday, and so on and so on. But if we look at Saturday compared to Wednesday, that's a massive difference, right? This is basically a 25% difference in the custom acquisition cost with the spend being nearly the same. So that's a massive, massive insight. 25% is massive when we talk with customer acquisition cost and cash flow over time. This is super, super important. Next, we can look at goals. Um, we can do a goal for the week, for the quarter, for example. So I can see this is the quarter of ad spend goal. And I can say, this is what I'm trying to spend over the quarter. And we can really monitor it over time with the customers. How many customers I'm trying to acquire over the next quarter. And how many new customers I'm trying to acquire? So I'm trying to acquire 5,000 customers for this quarter. And we can see I'm, about, I'm now about 30% complete, right? So we can see we're currently not very high, likely to reach our goal. So it means we need to push up the acquisition efforts, whatever it may be, uh, and play around with this. We can see customers versus returning customers, right? And we can see how many returning customers we have on a weekly basis. This is a 90 day breakdown. And this is week number 19, 20, 21. And we can see over time how many customers are coming back and returning and all those kind of stuff. And we can really play around with that kind of data. So it's super, super interesting to visualize this, to really understand this. And this is also where you can come to the customer or you do the brand or not to understand how effective these kind of areas are. LTV to customer acquisition costs. We've talked about this a lot today, but it's super, super important to understand how much my average uh, LTV is, how much the average customer acquisition cost. And this is a, a really nice visualizing to see that the customer acquisition cost compared to the LTV is very, very high, right? The LTV is very high compared to it, meaning we can make it a very high profit over time, even if the return on ad spend for the initial conversion is not very high. And that's something that's super important to add. Something that could have been interesting to add here as well is AOV, average order value, and all those kind of stuff um, to play around with. Now, what's really important to understand is this is just a template. It's all customizable. Whatever you want to change, whatever is actually important for your store, for your agency, for your brand, you can actually implement it. It's all uh, drag and drop, very, very easy, very, very simple. Um, so really go ahead, play around, and do it um, yourself. Now, in just a minute, we're going to jump into the Q&A. Everyone can go into the Q&A and 
ask questions and it will be um, great to see as many people as possible as always. Um, but before that, I want to show you guys something. Um, whoever came to this webinar has an exclusive offer. Uh, I hope you guys enjoy it and use it. We want to get you guys as much value as possible for this um, uh, one quick report and to really utilize it. So for that reason, we're giving you guys a report, one quick report, lifetime deal, lifetime access, super simple, one-time payment. Uh, I'll put this in the link so you guys can utilize it and, and really uh, maximize on this offer. No tricks, one-time payment, one report for life. Really utilize this, get it out there as much as possible to really make the most of it. Um, and if you guys did go ahead and purchase from the web, from this webinar, send me an email, send your success managers an email, and we can jump on a call and help build a report that's specifically for you guys and make sure you guys can utilize it as much as possible. So I'm just popping this in the chat as well. So you guys can just go ahead and make sure you get this deal while it's still available. I really think it's a great offer for you guys to utilize it and make the most out of these dashboards that we just talked about. Now, we talked a lot, specifically I talked a lot. So I would love to hear you guys now. So I'm opening it up for a Q&A. Um, I'll let uh, Nico assist me with the Q&A because I can see quite a bit of questions already came in. Um, so Nico, uh, let's do it. Great, thanks, Danny. Um, Yeah, so our first question came from Alex uh, quite at the start of the session. And he was just asking, he's saying, I have WordPress, can I blend data? So essentially asking if we can do WordPress in the one-click report. Yeah, so currently one-click report is only available for Shopify from that part of the CRM, but we are always working more integrations. For example, WooCommerce, rather than talking WordPress, most likely is WooCommerce. Um, we are definitely looking into there. We are working on it already. Clavio is going to come out this quarter, which will be a massive advantage. And we definitely are working on getting more channels as well. WooCommerce is on the list as well. But currently, it's only on Shopify as a CRM, but we are working on getting more into them. Great. Um, then we've got a question from an anonymous attendee. Um, I think this is more of like a winning statement instead of a question. But he, he said, why would one pay for any other marketing analytics when it's just $29 a month? That is very, very true. It sounds like a statement, not a question, but I agree with you completely. Uh, it's really a no-brainer. At the end of the day, something that I think is important to understand about Magix is Magix is a marketing cloud. We offer a lot of different services, and this is an extra service we go ahead and uh, provide uh, for minimal, minimal cost in order to give as much value as possible for our customers. Brilliant. Um, then Dennis had a uh, some great feedback here saying that I must acknowledge that the presentation has been superb. Thanks, Danny. It's been so insightful. Can you please share these slides over email? Of course, of course. We'll make sure to send this to everyone that signed up and the recording. Uh, once the recording is ready, uh, definitely we'll share it. And a big credit to Nico and Mana who worked very hard on getting this presentation up and running. So that's definitely credit for them as well. Great. Um, then another one coming from Peter asking, uh, what are the key benefits of having the blended view of data from multiple advertising platforms in one report? Yeah, I think that's a, I, th I, th I think that's an interesting one. By the end of the day, the main benefit is you don't need to jump between faces and you minimize by a lot your potential for, for mistakes, right? When you take data from all these different places, copy paste and all this kind of stuff, it's so easy to make a mistake. Over here, you look at last seven days. Over here, you look at last 30 days. It happens all the time. And then when you put all this report in one place, you make a mistake and it, it skews your entire data. So having this all in one place in one click of a button last 30 days makes it super simple to go ahead and utilize this. Great. Um, then another one coming in from Sarah asking, how will the one-click report help me grow my business? Awesome. That's a really good question. And I think the main thing for me to understand here is once I, when I speak to customers and see this all the time, and we actually break down the LTV to cut, that's when they actually see the full potential of their business. That's when they actually see the full potential of their marketing on Facebook, which is still the number one acquisition. Right? So even on Facebook, if you're only doing break even, you're going to be making a lot of money on the long run, statistically. And that's something that you want to focus on and understand. And that's something that's really important to grow your business. And in addition to that, it allows you to identify a lot of small different insights. So the insights will be there um, to really identify age groups, gender, marketing channels, 
all these different placements and, and little segmentations to really make sure we maximize performance as much as possible. Great. Um, then Kyle asks, can the dashboard be accessed and used effectively on other devices such as a tablet or mobile? 100%. So I actually didn't show this here. I should have, but I didn't. Uh, you have this option that says share, and then you can take this URL and send it to anyone in the world. And even if they've never heard of magic, never been to magic, they don't know what magic is, they click on it and they can open it from any device. So that's why it's really easy to multitask with different people and to communicate with different people. Uh, if you're an agency that's using magic, or if you're a brand owner and you want to communicate to someone else, click a button, get the link, share it. If you're on your mobile, on your iPad, on your whatever it may be, you will be able to see this very easily and access it from anywhere. Brilliant. Then another question from Alex asking, how long will the lifetime offer be available? Uh, I think it's available till the uh, end of the week, if I'm not mistaken, but I wouldn't risk missing out. It's again, it's a $67 uh, for lifetime, so I would take advantage of it while I can, as fast as I can, and take uh, make the most of it. Brilliant. Um, then um, we've got a, another one coming from Konstantinos asking, I wasn't here at the start, but is there a chance to add reporting for LinkedIn ads? Um, he says for the last uh, five to six years, he's been working with lead generation and high ticket offers. Do you believe that it will be useful for us? For e-com, I believe that it is awesome, but for lead gen, is it just as good? Because um, they don't have an estimate sales cost, so they don't have any um, return on ad spend to report on. Yeah, so you don't have a return on ad spend, but you do work on like a uh, cost per lead, right? And all those different metrics. So definitely, I think there's a lot of value there for leads as well. Happy to um, jump on a call sometime and we can make sure we build like a lead report that will suit you a bit better. Uh, but what's about LinkedIn ads, um, it is something, we, we're looking at all the channels, right? Uh, I can't say LinkedIn is the top of our priority because I think there are other ones that are getting more traction and people are using them much more. Uh, but I think it definitely will eventually move to there as well. But I, would, I wouldn't say LinkedIn is kind of the top priority. Great. Uh, then we've got two questions here from Dennis asking, um, would, that, would the dashboard really, would this one-click report be beneficial for someone who's just running ads on one platform? So for example, only on Meta? Yeah, we even have a template for that that I created called like a Meta Insight. Uh, and just gives you general insights about your account, the age groups, the genders, all these different placements, where you're making more money, where you're making less money. And it just really helps you visualize the data and understand it much better. For me, it was a big hole. Um, you can you can always, it's much easier when it's on one platform to do this on Excel. Um, but again, for me personally, I think it's much, much easier to just do this uh, by this. You get a much report, it automatically updates. You don't need to do anything manually uh, and really use this. And eventually, if you do an early meta, you will at some point add Google, TikTok, whatever it may be. It's the kind of like the flow of life of a marketer. Uh, so you want to make sure you have something that you already be prepared to take that in uh, and give you that solution. Brilliant. Um, then a the last one from Alex asking, does the report, um, the dashboard really make sense if I don't use Shopify at the moment? So unfortunately, you can't see new customer acquisition versus returning customers uh, without having Shopify now. Yeah, so that's just an added value, right? But just for example, I able to see the blended raw, uh, the blended ROS and all these different things from all these different marketing channels and all these different insights and looking at all the data from all your accounts in one place without needing to move between spreadsheets or without needing to move between Google Ads or Ads Manager. It's still a massive extra value that you want to make sure you utilize and, and get there, at least in uh, my opinion. Great. Uh, then a the last question from an anonymous attendee asking, can I share the report with clients? Yes. One of the big, big advantages um, for sharing the reports is that you can share it with anyone, right? Once you create a report, so let's say I'm an agency owner, and this is actually what we see that agency owners love to do. Uh, they create these reports, and then they create the share button, and they do one for each client. And then they share this report with the client. And then the client doesn't need to ask them how's performance this month, what's happening. You can simply refresh the screen and see the performance updated in real time. Uh, you can see the how much money he spent. You can see all the revenue coming in and all those different stuff. And it makes life much easier when communicating with the client because the client can say, no, my reports on my performance is bad, my performance is good. 
remove that. We're speaking the same language now, no good or bad. What's your custom acquisition cost? What's your return on ads? And what's your blended spend? It's all in front of him. Makes life much, much easier. One last question coming in is asking, um, do we, can we, can we, uh, John is asking, can we integrate other advertising channels such as YouTube performance? The YouTube sets under Google. So if you're doing YouTube ads, it will send under a Google ads campaign. So definitely you'll be able to see that kind of data uh, inside the um, OCR as well. Yeah, 100%. Brilliant. And then the very last one from Konstantinos asking, is there any recording? He would like, like to watch it from the start. Yes, definitely. Um, once we add a few days, the recording will be available and uploaded to our um, academy, academy.magic.com. But anyone that signs up will get the recording in the email anyway. But uh, if you don't get it in the next couple of days, just pop us a message on chat and we'll be sure to send it to you. Uh, but it will be available on the academy in the next couple of days. Brilliant. I see another one coming in from Joe asking what kind of support and assistance does Magix offer in using and understanding the one-click reports and the features? All of it, right? You have a question, you have 24-6 live, live support that you can ask. You have the amazing success managers that are happy to jump on a call with you and build the dashboard with you. Uh, I can personally jump on a call and build the dashboard for you. Not for you, with you. I think it's important to build it with you so you can understand how to utilize it in the future and expand. So we offer all the support. Um, as we said, um, this is a very low ticket item and we're trying to provide you as much value for the last amount uh, spent on your end. So I think that's the big vision behind it and we need to really try and give you as much value as possible. Great. And then just one great question coming in from Muhammad asking, can you provide examples of strategies to increase the lifetime value of existing customers? Yeah, that's a that's a big one, right? We can do a whole webinar about that. But the, um, the easiest way to do it is to make sure, first of all, you have a good email marketing campaign set up, right? A good flow for the email marketing to make sure you um, reach out to bring them back to do all those kind of stuff. And then something that people forget about a lot is creating a good, effective retention campaign on Facebook. So taking your Shopify list, uploading it into Facebook, and then segmenting it out for people that purchased over 60 days ago or 30 days ago, and then creating a campaign for those people while speaking the correct language, right? A lot of people speak to these people the same way they speak to acquisition customers, but it's a completely different type of customer. These people know your brand, they know who you are, they don't need to try and sell them, you need to try and bring them back again and maximize that um, LTV. Uh, so that's why the, the two main biggest strategies to really do it, retention campaign and that. Another thing that's important to do is to, is to maximize the conversion, the AOV, right? And that you can do a lot of one-click upsells and exclusive deals that people unlock after they purchase uh, and so on and so on that allows you guys to really maximize the AOV and give you um, greater conversion values for the conversions that you're doing. Uh, yeah, I think that makes sense. Great. And then Mike was also asking now, what are some common ways to reduce the customer acquisition cost without compromising on the customer acquisition quality? So I think it's it's a very different question when we look at leads and e-com, right? Because when you look at quality for e-com, for lead, then obviously it's a bit more uh, specific and a bit more difficult. But in e-com, you don't really look at the quality, you're looking at the revenue that is generated. So as long as you're acquiring a customer and the average LTV stays high over time, you're making profit. Um, best way to to do that is to do a lot of greater testing because the way to acquire new customers from the acquisition part of the funnel. Uh, you need to test all the time new creators there, find your winning assets and just test, test, test a lot of creators, six, seven, eight creators a week. Um, if you have a brand that really wants to scale, that's the correct way to do it. If you if you have someone doing your ads, then definitely make sure you get a lot of them out there and test a lot of different hooks, a lot of different angles. We did a webinar last month about UGCs and how to maximize that. So definitely take a look into that. And that's, I think, a good way to drive your acquisition. Uh, you can also use Sparkle to create a lot of different hooks for you to try and test out those different ones. And then the, the idea is once you find the winning hook is you scale very aggressively. And that usually allows you to win a good acquisition for low price. Um, but yeah. Looks uh, like it's all our questions. Sorry, I see one coming more in. Um, 
Alex is just asking for the webinar of the UGC. So yeah, we'll make sure we send that out to you. Okay, I'll just show you guys as well, just so you know. If you go to academy.magic.com uh, and you go to webinars, we have all the webinars that we did. So here's the UGC webinar from last month, and this one will be uploaded over here in about a week or so as well. Cool, guys. Um, love the Q&A. Love that there's so many people asking questions. It's always a good sign to see that people are actually interested, and I'm not just talking to myself, so it's always fantastic to see. I uh, appreciate everyone uh, that came and stayed. It was really great fun, as always. Um, see you guys next month for another webinar. We're going to do super exciting topics coming up. Uh, reminder, this is the time to start planning for Q4. Plan your OCR dashboard, your one triple four dashboards for Q4. Plan your budget for Q4. Plan your marketing tactics for Q4. Plan your goals for Q4. Q4 starts now. It doesn't start in October. You need to be prepared now. You need to have all your creatives tested so you already know what you can scale. Make sure to utilize it right now as much as possible. Uh, thank you guys so much. Uh, if there's any questions, we're always available to help and uh, we'll be in touch soon. Have the best of uh, nights or mornings, depending on where you are in the world, and we'll be in touch.